Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well. Welcome from the video, it is Monday morning the 8th of July and this marks three weeks since Jay Slater disappeared. The 19 year old young man from Oswald Twistle in the great county of Lancashire was out on the Spanish island of Tenerife enjoying a three day music festival. In the early hours of the Monday morning he went 20 odd miles out of his way from where the festival was to go to the remote village of Masca with two guys. You know all of this if uh, you've been following the story. Now, TV investigator Mark Williams Thomas, who claims to have been involved in high profile cases like exposing Jimmy Savile, he wasn't a police officer then. He hasn't been a police officer for 24 years. The exposure of Jimmy Savile, you know, the well-known pedo here in the UK, was a journalistic thing. They didn't expose him until after he died because of the legal complications. He wasn't the only journalist involved in that endeavour. But he crops up where there are high-profile cases. He cropped up last year in the Nicola Bully case and made erroneous statements on the banks of the River Wire next to the bench. And he got on my nerves then. Now, in Jay Slater's case, at least he has been talking to witnesses and we're hearing some information that Mark has gleaned. Now, I'm not saying I believe him. I'm not saying I don't believe him. I'm putting out there what he's saying because it's all we've got. Yes, we've had uh, a brief interview from Lucy, we've had a brief interview from Ophelia, and we've had an interview with Brad. Lucy and Brad, along with someone called Hodge, were Jay's friends who were over there in Tenerife at the music festival. And Ophelia is the owner of the cafe next to the Airbnb. Her brother owns the Airbnb. So Mark Williams Thomas has done another short video for Twitter and we're going to play it, going to comment on it. We're going to see where we're at on this uh, three week mark. Okay, let's go. I've now spoken in some detail to one of these men, Ayub Kasim, who was known as Johnny Vegas. I thought it was the other guy who was known as Johnny Vegas. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've also identified the other male that was with him, but I've not yet spoken to him. Ayub has provided me with his account of what he says happened on that morning, Monday the 17th of June. He says he was on the strip, Jay wanted to carry on partying, and he said he had nowhere to stay, so he said he could come back to his. The Mail Online tracked Ayub Kasim down and spoke to him briefly. And to them, he also said that Jay had nowhere to go. That's a lie. Now, whether it's Kasim that's lying, or whether it was Jay that was lying to him, I don't know, but Jay did have somewhere to go. He had accommodation in Los Cristianos, just down the road from the music festival. He had somewhere to go, he had accommodation. And um, Kasim has said that he actually spent the weekend with Jay and his friends. He's, um, you know, a talkative guy. People know him out there. And he also said to the Mail Online that he wouldn't have let Jay go with him if he didn't know him. Now, he didn't know Jay very well, but he was a friend of a friend. So he did know that Jay had somewhere to go. So what happened? What happened that prevented Jay going back to his accommodation? They say in the car, they played music and chatted before stopping to get a drink at a cafe, at a shop, just prior to entering the mountains. He says he was driving, his friend was in the passenger seat and Jay was in the back. They say on arrival at the rental, his friend opened the door, went into the left and went straight to sleep. Jay walked in behind, followed by him, and when gone inside, they went upstairs, and Ayub then said to Jay, sofa's yours, here's a towel, here's a blanket, have a shower if you want. Jay asked for a cigarette, and Ayub said, I've got some camel cigarettes, and put one on the side. 
Jay then asked for a phone charger. He said, go into my friend's room. He's asleep. Take his charger and you can put your phone on charge. So how long did all this take? Because in a previous video, Mark Williams Thomas said that they left the strip around six. I've spoken to lots of witnesses and have a clear picture now of what happened overnight of Sunday the 16th of June through to the morning of Monday the 17th of June. I'm now in a position to release some of that detail. I'm doing so given the massive interest in this case, mainly to provide some clarity and to clear up the total inaccuracies and misreporting of information which is neither helpful to the police, my investigation, nor crucially to the family. We know that shortly before 6am on Monday the 17th of June, Jay left the area of Veronica Strip Las Americas in a Seat Leon hire car with two males casually known to him. Jay and a number of his friends had spent time with them both over the previous two days. All three males, including Jay, then travelled north via the main motorway, the TF1, to go to the two males holiday rental Casa Abu Latina in Masca which was about an hour's drive away. En route, Jay posted a Snapchat saying that he'd taken a £12,000 Rolex from a person. We have been unable to validate this in terms of a reported theft. However, friends of Jay said he would not make this up and the watch was subject of later conversation between the friends. Not long after arriving at the rental, Jay around 7am had contact with various friends via social media, both inside and outside the rental. And during these calls, various videos, chats were had and pictures sent, including the one he took on the doorstep that many of you will have seen. I am confident that that photograph on the doorstep is him wearing a throw, a blanket from the apartment and his black and green Air Max trainers, which he had on the night that he went out. We know at around 8 a.m. there was a level of communication with the host of the rental property in which she communicated by hand digits to him that the bus was leaving at 10 a.m. from the bus stop right by the apartment. With this, Jay walked off, turning left and up the hill. We know that Jay used an Apple iPhone and the Apple Maps takes you that route up the hill, walking back to Los Cristianos, where he was staying. Whilst on the walk, he talked to and messaged his friends. Whilst walking, Jay spoke to at least three people, telling them that he was lost with little phone battery and without water. He was told to go back by two people to the rental. He said he could not do that and that he'd already been walking 30 minutes and that he was now off road and was walking on a track where there were loose stones. We know that at 8.49 and at 8.50, Jay sent his location via both Snapchat and WhatsApp to two friends. We can confirm that it was Jay using his phone at that stage and there was no indication that he was with anyone. The location is fixed by GPS and we've done tests in the area and it's accurate to five to ten metres. The fixed point is the Barranco Juan Lopez hiking path which fits the description given by the witnesses that spoke to him stating that he was on a stony path and having walked 30 minutes from the rental apartment. From this point, no further contact is had with Jay because his phone battery dies. We've received information that would suggest that Jay left the rental property feeling scared and he would not return to the rental, even though that would have been the most sensible course of action and also where he could have charged his phone, got some water and made contact with friends. We continue to investigate this aspect. So this festival finished at four, so they hung around for two hours and Jay even intimated in a snapchat the one where he said he'd stolen what the media are calling a Rolex and loads of people keep saying it was an AP it was an AP it was an AP I know it was <laughs> so I've shown this snapchat loads of times how relevant is that to the story I don't know did Jay need to leave because he'd stolen this item they stop to get a drink so they're going to be there shortly before seven the friend goes straight to bed jay and ayub chat for a bit gets a cigarette from ayub he asks for a phone charger presumably he didn't charge his phone for very long because 
by 10 to 9, his phone was out of juice. Maybe he put a bit of charge on it. Let's say it was on 20%, let's say. Now, if he's out there calling people, video chatting, that battery is going to die pretty quickly, isn't it? Ayub says he then goes to sleep and he's woken by a buzzer. Ayub says he comes down the stairs. Jay says to him, what's that annoying noise, which was the doorbell. So Ayub's gone to bed. The friend's in bed. Jay's up. So Jay's not gone to sleep. Ayub's woken up by the buzzer. All right, so what time was this? Ayub says he opens the door and speaks to a woman and a man and they gesture that he needed to move his car. So presumably this is Ophelia. Either Ophelia and her husband or Ophelia and her brother, I don't know who, they park this rental car, probably blocking Ophelia in. Ayub says he gets into his car and he's starting to move it and he looks in the rearview mirror and he sees Jay talking to a woman. So that has to be Ophelia. Doesn't it? He's got his trainers on, so he's about to leave. Jay then says to Ayub, having moved the car, the woman says, I can get a bus every 10 minutes. And Ayub says, he says to him, mate, just chill out. I'll drop you off in town when I wake up properly. So Ayub did offer to drop him into town. So now we're hearing that Jay was told that he could get a bus every 10 minutes. Maybe that's a misunderstanding because the bus was at 10 o'clock, so we've been told. Now, there's been a lot of speculation as to why Jay didn't wait for, what, two hours for the bus, because this was, I think, about 8 o'clock. This is what Mark Williams Thomas said in his previous video. So, within the space of an hour, we've had a brief conversation. We've had Hayub go to bed. We've had Jay maybe charging his phone a little bit and then woken by a buzzer. Now, a lot of people have speculated that he misunderstood her holding 10 fingers up. There isn't another bus for another 10 hours. But if Jay had told Ayub that he thought she meant a bus every 10 minutes, why didn't he just wait for the bus? So that just does not make sense to me, why he just didn't wait for a bus. And previously, Mark Williams Thomas has said that Jay appeared to be scared when he left the Airbnb. So at this moment, we're not hearing from Hayub's account that Jay was scared. But why did Mark Williams Thomas in a previous video say that he thought Jay was scared when he left? What was he scared of? Is Ayub Kasim feeding Mark Williams Thomas uh, a big lie? Possibly. Where does this stolen watch fit in? Where does it fit in? He went, no, 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 no. I'm hungry. I need to get a scram. And the woman told me I can get a bus every 10 minutes to Los Cristianos. All right. So he's going to get the bus because he needs some scram. So did they not have any food at the Airbnb? None. No food. Nothing. All right. Says he replies, there's no bus coming. This is my green door. If you need me, he says he shut the door. Jay walks away and he goes back to sleep. Ayub, last time he sees Jay, saying, look, there's no bus. Jay doesn't appear to wait for the bus. Jay appears to walk in the opposite direction to where he should be going. He says he gets a call from a friend of Jay's who says that he's in a ditch somewhere and he's been cut by a cactus. All right, so that must be Lucy. So Lucy has Ayub's number. I think he and her are a previous acquaintances. So is that to do with the drug trade? We know that Ayub Kasim went to prison in the UK for nine years for Class A distribution in Wales, in Cardiff. The evidence still strongly supports that Jay left the Airbnb suddenly, walked for 30 minutes before wandering off-road where at 0849 and 0850 on the Monday he dropped a location pin. This is approximately on the uh, Branco Juan Lopez trail that the phone last pinged. And this is a GPS, not a phone tower ping. This is a GPS location. His friends knew exactly where he was. Did they say, just stay there? We heard that two people who he spoke to, he spoke to three people, two of them told him to go back to the Airbnb and he said he couldn't go back. Why couldn't he go back? This is not the story that Hayub Kasim is saying. He's saying, well, 
you know, if you need me, that's my door. Something is not adding up here. Something clearly happened, in my opinion, at that Airbnb that prevented Jay from going back. Did the knock on the door give Jay the opportunity to escape? Long pause on purpose. This on Google Earth is the location of that last ping, approximately, right? GPS location. Now, GPS can be out as much as 10 meters. So the red circle is a 10 meter radius, so 10 meters in all directions. So if, as some people say, the phone was thrown, well, there's your spot. There's your spot. You've only got a 10 meter radius of this location to search for it. So go and find the phone. Dogs find phones. Cassie can find phones. Loads of videos now on Cassie's channel of her finding phones. Get a dog to go and search that area for a phone. Obviously, dogs can't go through heavy cactus brush because they just get spiked to bits. That would be cruel to let them do that. So the dogs are very limited, actually, in this location. They can't go through that heavy brush of cactuses. They also can't traverse those very deep ravines. Dog searches, people are saying, well, the dogs would have found him. There's not been a lot of dogs out there. There was a Belgian Malinois early on, and then some dogs from Madrid came, like, one day. I've seen a Labrador. Uh, I think that's it. I think I've seen a Malinois and a Labrador. I'd have to check the footage back that I've, I've collected. There, there has been, actually, a local person with a dog on Saturday. The family went out with some local volunteers, and one of them had a dog. Don't know what that dog's specialism was, if anything. But, no, the dogs are limited in that location. But somebody, go and find the phone. And then it would prove to me that perhaps foul play was involved if the phone was there and Jay wasn't. I mean, they could have dropped it, obviously, but someone go and find that phone. As part of this investigation, we have sought to identify and speak with as many people that Jay had contact with whilst in Tenerife. The result of this digging has opened up an established criminal network with links to drugs, violent crime and theft. We know that Hub Kasim has his drug conviction, but also, as we talked about in a video a couple of days ago, an expose by the Mail Online showed the links that Hub Kasim had with a couple of rappers, one of them who has a cannabis bar in Tenerife. There's lots of conversation about Lucy being a dealer. Brad's come out and said that he's not a drug mule, okay? Uh, there's texts allegedly from Lucy. I don't believe they're real. You're going to have to prove to me that these texts between Lucy and her friend Chloe are real. You're going to have to prove to me that. But how is any of that, if all true, is related to Jay's disappearance? Like, you can have this criminal network, you can have corrupt police... You can have the police not wanting to investigate because they don't want to rock the boat with these, the, this drug underworld. Highly possible, in my opinion. But how does it relate to the disappearance of Jay Slater, is the question. We'll appreciate that at this stage, I cannot expand any further on what we now know. However, at this stage, I'm unable to say if this network has anything to do with Jay's disappearance but remain open-minded as we continue to investigate. Yeah, and look, I remain open-minded. I always remain open-minded. People think that I'm stuck on one theory. No, I'm not. My theories change as new information comes in. So prove to me that the text between Lucy and Chloe are real. Prove to me that the phone has been thrown into undergrowth. I'll start to consider the possibility that Lucy was involved more than I am doing right now. But we know that there's these um, criminal networks. We know Hayub Kasim is all in on it. We know he's all over it. I think he goes and works out in Tenerife so that he can deal drugs. Is Lucy helping him? Does she know him? I don't know. But how does it relate to Jay's disappearance? And why did Mark Williams Thomas say on a previous video 
that Jay was scared when he left the Airbnb. Now, the family are not buying that this was some kind of accident. They've been saying from the jump that they believe that foul play has befallen Jay. A Snapchat that Debbie Duncan, Jay's mother, got as soon as she like landed in Tenerife, somebody texted her and said that she's never going to see Jay again. And Mark Williams Thomas, however, has said that there's no credible ransom demand, there's no credible information that Jay was kidnapped or has been taken hostage. We got a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Why didn't he wait for a bus? Why was he scared when he left the Airbnb? I think if we can answer that question, if we can confirm that he was scared, if we can confirm that Ayub Qasim is lying in some way, then I think we have the reason why Jay didn't wait for the bus. And he followed Apple Maps erroneously up into the mountain. So I'm going to read some information here from the Manchester Evening News, who've also been doing quite a lot of work on this story. Spanish police have already spoken to Kasim and the unnamed pal he was travelling with, after which officers on the ground said the pair were irrelevant to the investigation. Kasim has now returned to his family's flat in East London after he reportedly booked the £40 a night Tenerife apartment under the name of Ayub Abdul. Speaking earlier this week, he said, the only comment I have to make is that Jay came to the house alive and left the house alive. I let the geezer stay at mine because he had nowhere else to go. Lie. His friends had all left him. Well, maybe they had, but still, he could go back to his accommodation. I know Jay through friends. See, he knows Jay through friends. So, who who's the friend? Lucy? I don't know. Not going to bring someone back to mind if I don't know them. I'm doing the geezer a favour and now my face is all over the news. It's a bit mental. I haven't even done anything. But the decision has sparked concern from his family and many on social media who question why police allowed some of the last people to see him alive to travel back to the UK. Look, I've no problem with them uh, letting them go back to the UK because you need probable cause to hold someone. So they can't hold them without arresting them. So as long as they know where they are, I don't have a problem with that. One of Jay Slater's close family members said that he's been thinking third-party involvement from the start as the search for a missing teenager goes into its third week. It's actually into its fourth week. If you think about it, it's three weeks, but we're now into the fourth week. Glenn Duncan who's the youngster's uncle, joined with the family members in a renewed search for the 19-year-old from Lancashire. Mr Duncan said, It baffled me from day one. How can you say you've no relevance when they are the two of the last people to see him alive? It doesn't make sense. I can't get my head around it. It's like if one of you guys going missing now and letting the rest of you fly home and saying we're not bothered about it, it's a massive letdown. It's one of them too. You don't want to give them a hammer in. I can't step on their toes. Jay's friend Lucy Law, who travelled with him to the Canary Islands, was one of the last people to speak to him around 8am on the morning he went missing. In an interview on July 18th, Miss Law said, Jay was obviously thinking he would be able to get home from there. But then, in the morning, he set off walking, using his maps on his phone, and ended up in the middle of the mountains with nothing around. He rang me about 8 o'clock in the morning, saying his phone was on 1%. He said, I don't know where I am, I need a drink, my phone's about to die. The bus stop was right next to the house, so obviously if he'd gone to get the bus, he wouldn't have got lost because the stop is visible from the front door. Jay's uncle has said the family has since had scant contact with Lucy. So do they think that there's something uh, amiss with her? Mr Duncan has branded every passing day as just torture, as a devastated family waits for news. Speaking about the online trolls spreading horrific rumours, Mr Duncan said, I'm not on social media or anything, so I can just block it out. It's the world we live in. If he's gone on a trail, like a path like this, and he's got lost down there or fallen down, I think he would have been found by now. Now, I don't, I don't think he necessarily would have been found by now, because we don't know how far he walked. And if he's fallen down a ravine, a drone or a dog isn't going to get to him. Um, a drone, anything from above isn't going to see him. If he's down a ravine, under a ledge, in a cave, of which there are many, um, I can see how easily he would have been missed. 
Mr Duncan told her his suspicions, saying, I've been thinking third-party involvement from the start. There's just some things that have already been out there. Interesting. Yet, yeah, Mr Williams Thomas ruled out the idea that Jay had been kidnapped, despite his mum Debbie previously saying she believed it was what had happened to him. He added, we have no evidence at this stage to say there's any third party criminal involvement in Jay's disappearance. However, there's still a number of outstanding issues. Mark Williams Thomas, however, claimed that Jay was feeling scared when he left the property. Why was he scared? Why does Mark Williams Thomas believe that Jay was scared? So we know that there's been videos out there that are just nonsense, that are old videos. So Mr. Duncan says, it's easy to get lost down there. It's a huge and unforgiving search site. He endured several hours under a scorching 25 degree C temperature as they searched the valley close to the village of Masca. There was a group of us and you can't see anybody. It's got to a point where I wasn't even looking for my nephew. I was just trying to find my own way to safety. There you go. That's the issue. Very rocky and potentially treacherous. What do you think of this new information? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.